Hey everybody, welcome to another Silver Bayonet Battle Report. Today I'm kicking off the solo campaign for Silver Bayonet, um, which modifies the game, and this is actually the second half. There's 10 competitive scenarios in here, and then a five mission solo campaign, uh, which you could also play cooperative if you want, if there's some, there's some sort of like minor modifications for it. Um, and it basically tells a story. So this is kind of like the difference between match play in a game of 40K and narrative play. The idea here is that we're more sort of like concerned with telling a story and having like interesting events happen than we are about the actual sort of like winning or losing of the mission. So uh, my same exact unit, my, my silver bayonet unit from Spain uh, with uh, Lieutenant Ramirez is going to be taken to the field in the first mission where they encounter deep in the woods in Europe a very un, sort of di I guess unconventional and different wolf pack. Um, so the big core mechanic changes here is because there's no opposing player, you kind of always have initiative. So you have the first phase for player, which is you activate half the models in your unit, then the monster phase, then the second phase for player. So you should still roll for unexpected events, mostly just because they add chaos and interesting stuff to the game, but they won't happen with no opposed initiative check. Um, they're more to see if you kind of have different sort of like weird events taking place out there in the, 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 the harvestman infested Europe. Uh, and then the only other sort of differential is that there's no monster dice in the monster pool. Uh, you could acquire them for other means, but there's one power dice and one skill dice. So they about have the fate pool with no monster dice, so you can't really control the monsters, although you could acquire other ones. Um, and you're always sort of with having the initiative, but you could generate unexpected events on a double one or a double zero on your 2d10s. So uh, other than that, the missions kind of give you the, the rest of the story to play through. So we'll show you the current state of the unit after their first adventure where they fought the French and were defeated. Um, and they've slunk off into the woods basically on a new mission. Uh, and then we'll get this underway. All right, here we are set up for the wolf pack. So two weeks ago, a specialist unit was sent in search of a lost chapel deep in the forest. They never returned. Now your unit's been dispatched to find the missing unit or to learn their fate and see if you can locate the lost chapel yourselves. If the missing unit's located, it's imperative that their orders be recovered so that they don't fall into enemy hands. Following the trail of the previous unit proved no doubt trouble at all as they left obvious tracks and there was little rain to wash them away. For three days, you follow their trail into the ever-deepening gloom of the dark woods. Then near dusk in the third day, you come upon a scene of carnage. It appears you've found the missing unit. However, before you can confirm this, you hear a bone-tingling howl from nearby, and suddenly bright eyes are staring at you from the shadows all around. So, this mission's played on a uh, two and a half by two and a half board. I only have three foot and two foot boards, so um, it's very easy to kind of like you know get frustrated with like exact table sizes and stuff. But it's really simple. Take the closest table size and then just adjust the deployment. So I'm starting with my wolves instead of on the table edge, three inches back. Uh, and that's the easiest way, actually just um, two inches back because they're on one inch bases. And that changes the measurements to be appropriate. And then you can just subtract two from the movement if you want to leave the table. And you're playing the exact same game with slightly altered measurements. Our six orders, um, or six clue markers, sorry. Uh, the first two are eight inches from the middle. The second two are 10 inches from the middle. And the last two are 12 inches from the middle in a rough circle. Uh, I have to try and find the orders and exit the table with them. Anything else is a loss. Now, of course, every turn, terrible things are going to happen. And before the game starts, I'm going to roll a D8 clockwise, starting up at the top here. And one of these wolves is actually a werewolf. Number two. So up here, this mamma is not what it appears every to be. Every turn, random things will happen. More wolves will arrive. It'll start to rain. Uh, more werewolves show up, and things just generally get terrible. So here's my unit. Led, of course, by Ramirez, Tente Ramirez right here. Um, he is the uh, the leader, and he is armed with a breastplate for armor one. Um, he has a blunderbuss with uh, a shot bag, hand weapon, salt bag, and silvered weapon. So his weapon is silvered. Uh, and then he is great faith, so all of his decks kind of blessed. And indefatigable, he never gets uh, two tired tokens. He only ever gets one fatigue. And we have Inquisitor Rubio with his miracles, heal, courage, and bless weapon uh, in the back there with his staff and bag of <laughs> inquisitorial tricks. Uh, he's also a supernatural veteran, which means he gets uh, two little supernatural toys. So he's got a hand weapon, which is a staff, and then a holy icon and oil and torches, which can be handy for fighting werewolves because they have damage reduction five if they're not detected by silver or fire. Then we have Wachtmeister Breina, who has recovered from his injuries, although he was kind of killed last game. Uh, he's my monster hunter, supernatural investigator. Uh, he has a heavy weapon and pistol, a holy symbol, and silvered weapon. He's a monster hunter, so I actually do get a monster die, in addition to my skill and power dice in my fate pool. So normally, in a solo game, you only get one of each, 
but he gives you an additional monster die because he's used to hunting monsters which means I can alter the behavior potentially of the bad guys this game. Delgado, he's my sapper back here. He also was seriously injured and his brother Belgado, I guess, has taken over. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the sapper has a uh, heavy weapon, he's a combat engineer, and then his additional thing is he has silver shot for his, uh, his blunderbuss, which can be handy. Then we have three grenadiers in the back here. It's Ortiz, Sands, and Rubio. Uh, and they are all armed with oil and torches in addition to their cartridge boxes and uh, muskets. Of the three of them, only Sans and Rubio survived the last game and they, they therefore have some additional experience. So the other thing I recommend for solo games is grab some additional dice to roll all the dice at the same time for your tests and have the monster ones clearly laid out here. So power is going to be the uh, big silver, the big iron die here and then um, skill will be the weird kind of like monstrously green die for whenever we make checks. Uh, no need for initiative because we automatically have half the unit go first, but we will roll to see if a weird crazy event happens. It doesn't. No double ones or double zeros. Models in the unit, I get to activate three of them because we're rounding down here. So I think the easiest thing to do is activate the three grenadiers and just start taking shots. We'll activate my sapper <laughs> and two of the grenadiers. So we're going to start with uh, my sapper, Delgado. Uh, he's just going to spin around, doesn't actually count as a move, and take a shot with his musket and that werewolf. So that is uh, going to be a uh, shoot test. He is shoot plus one. He's gonna use his silvered shot uh, into, of course, the um, werewolf who is defense 13. So that is a six plus two is only an eight, nine. We'll spend our skill dice right now to reroll that because we get some early damage on him. Nope, nine, 10, doesn't hit. Damage would have been nice. All right, his muskets, we'll put some cotton down. So we'll go with this. Uh, yeah, you've got an unobstructed line of sight, so we'll use you, this grenadier. Gonna shoot the wolf instead. Sorry. He, of course, will duck for cover, which means get closer. Uh, so the grenadier, gonna shoot that other pup. That's a nine, plus one is 10, misses the 12 that he needs. Oh, it's going great so far, guys. And then last but not least, this last grenadier will shoot the pup again and get a six and also miss. Oh, you, you guys are just shooting into the wind here. Actually, just double checked monsters don't dive for cover. So he's just going to sit there, uh, which means the wolf wouldn't have died for cover either. So they just, they just sit around. Uh, so then we're going to start with our monsters and they will head towards the nearest thing in line of sight. So this fella going his eight. To here, the werewolf going six towards the closest in line of sight, just charging in with an Aru. Uh, line of sight over here, heading straight on in with another wolf. And then this one as well. The pack is hungry, they don't have anybody in melee, so they don't make attacks, and they also don't sprint. Things are getting sporty already. Well, second half of the turn now. I think we go with, we need to get to these clues. We gotta find these orders and get out of here or otherwise it's gonna be a problem. So we're actually gonna go with you and you're going to walk. Now you have Tintin Ramirez. He's got great faith and indefatigable. He's pretty quick. I think we need to get towards these markers over here. So he's gonna stay outside of an inch and just walk his six going this way. And he's gonna fire his blunderbuss into these two wolves. Hit for firing the blunderbuss. Um, but he has to make two shots, a shot against each. Here's he plus two, but he is minus one for shooting. He has to hit a 12. So the closest one, that's a nine, 10. He'll miss into the next one. Oh, I could reroll. I could reroll the three because I do have a power die. I feel like this is worth doing early. We're going to reroll it. Oh, there we go. So that's a 14, 15. This plus one damage is nine. It only has eight. So he smokes it. And then makes a shot against the other one. Plus one overall. Oh, sorry, plus two, plus zero because he moved. Uh, it's only going to be a four. He misses. Briner's going to go then, and he's just going to head on in with his sword and stab this wolf. Plus one to its test if it fights back, but he's going to try and smoke it on a twelve. He's plus two with his heavy weapon. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's pretty great right there. So that's a plus two. Um, it makes it a uh, ten. 18, 18 total uh, to hit a 12, and then he's plus one damage because it's a heavy weapon, so that will be seven. It has one left, and it will strike back. Quite kill it. Uh, it gets a 19 though, oh my god, and does nine damage. 12 health, so that takes him from uh, 12 down to three remaining. Well, uh, I think you're gonna need to hopefully take a walk around here and go look at some clues in a second Inquisitor. You're gonna be inquisitive. 
Uh, and then you're gonna try and heal with your courage plus three. Oh no, double ones. Yes, the, the Lord has failed you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, no, no healing on Briner. It's his last grenadier. He'll take a shot into this wolf and see if he can hit on a 12. Uh, it is a 12, uh, plus one, and it takes skill. So um, that was actually a 13 and five damage. It has eight, so three left. And then it's the event phase for the first round. So D10 on the wolf event table. Two more wolves arrive. Place two dark wolves in a random table corner. All right, sweet. So we'll go um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, two more wolves arrive up here. And random table will be three inches back. All right, well, initiative. Uh, uh, we didn't roll double ones or double zeros, so we get to actually go. Three models get to go here, so we're gonna start with the Inquisitor again. He's, oh gosh. Mm, yeah, he, he needs to heal Briner. He really needs to heal Briner, because Briner might just die here. But he also needs to go look at these these things. This could just be another werewolf that kills him too. <laughs> you know, we'll start with the boss. He's gonna heal, or she's gonna heal. He's gonna reload, and he's gonna take a shot into these two with his blunderbuss. Up the first. Uh, yeah, okay. So that's gonna be a. Oh, geez, that's the wrong die. Hey. Uh. Oh, sure. Uh, that's just a dead wolf. <laughs> uh, so it's a critical hit, which means it is ten damage plus two. Uh, and I rolled a 22 to hit, or 21, because I didn't move. The other one, because he's in range, uh, gets missed. But I smoke one of the wolves. Now fired his blunderbuss again. All right, you're going to heal. You do this time. So he gets to heal back three health and go to six, which means he's not quite as dead. And then you're going to move over to here and investigate next turn. Reiner's gonna, oh, does Reiner go? That werewolf might get us if we're not careful. Mmm. You can't kill the werewolf in one shot, but you could put a hurt on it. Yeah, we're going to go with you, the sapper. You're going to reload. And you're going to shoot that werewolf with your silvered shot. Bang! That's uh, an 11-12. Quite hit. So you have now fired again. Monsters go. Well, we'll start with the closest to furthest. So the one fighting Briner attacks him. He is defense 14. And it's melee plus one. Misses. It's the swing back then. Uh, and that'll do, that'll do 11 damage, just smokes in this getting bitten thing as a strike back, and that makes him fatigued. Next close to be here, and it's gonna jump in and fight this marine. Assume shot, because I don't know why he doesn't have a smoke cloud. I must have tried, I probably missed. And it attacks him, uh, he has a plus one to his melee stat, so that'll be a 12, which will miss, because he's defense 14. And you will fight back, you might as well. Uh, that's a 9-10 missed. Both become fatigued, the next one jumps in. And also attacks. Melee plus one. Uh, hits a four. He only need to hit a 13 now because the fatigue uh, makes him minus one defense. But he'll fight back. He's minus one melee, so he's just rolling a zero here to hit a 12. Oh, there he goes. Uh, that's going to be a 8-15. Man, uh, we'll do, I think it's power dice damage, so seven points. He'll have one left. He becomes fatigued and he becomes exhausted. So one fatigue out in each of the wolves, and then two on them. This wolf's coming in to fight my sapper, Delgado. Wait at him. Uh, he is uh, 13. Oh, geez. Okay, well, that's skill 10, 15, 16. Power dice damage, so only five points. He has 12 health, which will take him down to seven. He will strike back, though. Uh, he's melee plus one, plus two. No, wait, plus one. Yeah, so he needs to hit a... 12 here. Well, that'll do it. Uh, plus one is a 19. That's more. That's eight points of the power die there with his bayonet, so it kills him. This wolf comes piling in to make a stab. It misses. And this grenadier will fight back. Uh, and yeah, that's a power dice of 10, which is 10 points of damage. And I hit an 18 out of 12, kills another wolf. But he's now fatigued. And then does this werewolf quite make it? No, he's just out and we won't force combat. And these two wolves come piling down to here. They go towards the nearest clue marker because they can't see anybody. We'll be able to see next turn. So with these three having gone, sorry, these two having, yeah, these three having gone, Briner can still go. I think he's going to go help fight this werewolf. And he won't try and fight it this turn, but he's going to go pile in. So he'll make a walk going six because he does have, I think, a silvered weapon. He's the best qualified to do this. And then he'll sprint. Because it's already activated on 11. Not to 7, but he won't quite make it to there. Uh, you can activate, but you're exhausted. Which makes you very, very easy to kill. So you're going to walk over to here. And melee this wolf. Melee plus 1 from the Grenadier. 
Uh, that'll be a 14. He only needs three damage and he gets it. So that'll kill him. He'll become tired. This Grunder can't do anything without getting grabbed. So I guess he could reload and fire because he's not moving. What he's gonna do, he's just gonna, he's not gonna reload. He, ah, he can sacrifice his movement to reload and he's gonna light a torch. So he has fire attacks now. Either of those being moves, I should be safe. And then it's just this guy. He's gonna take a swing at that wounded wolf. He's exhausted, so he's plus nothing. He might actually be minus something. But that's a 13, even if he's minus one, he'd be at a 12 and do five points, which would kill it. Everybody's gone, so we remove our fatigue tokens. And let's roll on the wolf event table. Six. Six is four, seven. Another wolf arrives, place one in a random center of random table edge. So once again, we'll go top clockwise. Two, so another one appears up here. They just don't stop. Okay, round three, any crazy events? Not today. Uh, so we can go with three models. Mm, we should be okay to... We need to, we need to go try and let this guy fight us. It's more action efficient if I jump him. You can both hurt him in melee right now because you have fire and silver. So I think we try to just wait here. Yeah, you, you guys are going to wait. You're going to, you have silver shot. So you could reload one more shot into this, uh, this werewolf before it engages. Plus one to your shooting. It's minus one because it's obscured by your friends. That's going to miss. And I think you reload and start walking, because I want to start collecting these clues if I can. Actually, do you want to reload? Yeah, you reload and start walking. You'll reload and start walking. So one inch, and then you've got five left. It's, I think this is just two and a half high, so you can get to the top of it with your climb. And then sprint for your second skill. 11? Nope. So you're only going two. Going one, because it's a difficult train. Three, so then it's bra. The, the werewolf's going to go first in the monster phase. Now, I'm gonna spend my one monster dice to make it fight Briner instead. Not to go to the closest and come fight the guy who can actually hurt it back. Fight plus two, let's see if it hits. Oh, Briner's down, smokes him. Does 10 damage, strong to 11. Well, he taunted it and that's what happens. And then these two wolves get to go. They're gonna head eight. Coming towards the boss, Ramirez. And then this last one's gonna run towards Right here. Inquisitor, time to inquisitor. <laughs> so you're gonna investigate and see what happens. What do we find in this den of wolf trickery? Card is the Jack of Spades. A silver saint medallion. All the investigating figures attacks kind of silver for the rest of the scenario. Add one power dice to your fate pool. Sweet! Andy. Uh, and then he's gonna walk over to this thing and be ready to check it out next turn. Boss is gonna reload and fire his blunderbuss at these two wolves again. So, what do we got here? Minus one, plus two, so my, plus one overall, you need to hit a 12. Oh, we got a power die in the power pool, so let's reroll that. That's better, smokes the first one, and gets to take the secondary target, also at minus one, plus two, so plus one overall, hit a 12. I'll take it, but it's only um, six plus one, so it's got one wound left. Just about kills it, but kinda clips it so it doesn't die. Here's his, fire, his, his shotgun again. Just this grenadier left. Fighting a werewolf with a torch. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can let's see if we can hit him. Defense, I think it's 13. He's plus one. Uh, that's only gonna be a 12. It fights back, and it is plus two. Uh, 9, 10, 11. Doesn't quite hit him. Both are fatigued now, but it's underround, so it doesn't super matter. Let's roll in the event phase. A seven. Wolf rise, center of random table edge. So we're rolling a d8, not near the inquisitor. No, back up here. Thank goodness. They're still coming in from this direction. This must be where their den is. Half our models can go. We're in striking range of a couple more of these clues. This guy's about to die. He's gonna charge the boss though. Uh, I feel like we really need to finish off this werewolf. Well, we're gonna wait. So we're gonna go with this little guy. And he is going to just walk the difficult ground going three to there. And I'll see if he can sprint to the objective. 
That's an 11, does it? Have to two for being difficult. That's kind of open though, but he gets there. And then this ground here is gonna walk over to here, investigate. What do we find? The nine of spades, that is the missing order. The investigating figure may pick it up without spending an action. If he's reduced to zero health, they drop it. Mark the spot on the table. Any other unit members may pick up the order simply by making a move action adjacent. So we found what we were looking for. Sweet, well, that's good. <laughs> um, what else could we find? Nothing else we really want, I don't think. So it's time to get out of dodge. That was one, two, uh, and we have six miles off, so a third could go. I think we go with the Inquisitor, and he's just gonna investigate. What do we find? 10 of spades, ornate silver ramrod out of skill dice to the fate pool. I think he's gonna boogie. Over to here. Oh, you know what? No. He's going to... Yeah, he'll boogie. He'll boogie down to here. I'll just be like on his way out. Monsters go! It starts with this werewolf taking a swipe at my grenadier. Oh my god. 17, 18, 19 hits him. 10 damage plus strong is 11. I think he has 12 health. He has 11 health. Oh my god, just kills him. Smashed. Well, that's not great. Next closest would be right here. It's gonna go after the boss. Run on in, or limp on in, because he shot it. And then try and attack him. Hitting on a 14. That's a four. He'll strike back, why not? Uh, and we could reroll a skill die. We're plus two. That's not gonna, that's not gonna do anything, I don't think, though. He's just got a hand weapon. Power dice of one damage would kill it. We could reroll with the skill die. Nah, we'll just, just let it happen, get fatigued. And this last one can no longer see the Grenadier, so it's gonna come flying up here into Delgado, the Sapper. Gonna bite at him, plus one fight. Oh my god, well that's gonna be a skill 10, 11, 12. He needs to hit a 13, thank goodness. I guess Delgado will fight back. He's plus one to his melee stat. That's a 13. Uh, power is nine, just kills it. It impales itself on the bayonet. And now these guys remain to go, so I think we start with my Sapper. He's gonna reload. And he's gonna take a shot at that werewolf. Silver shot here, man, you can do this. You're plus one to hit, you have to hit a 13. Uh, that's a, uh, we can reroll the skill die, okay, goodness. That is a eight, there we go. So 17, 18 for his shoot. He needed a 13 to hit it. Uh, it's a musket, so it's skill, uh, which means it does eight damage. No reduction, because it's silver. He's on four left. Oh, finally, got it. you got your shit together. Here we go. And that's everybody who's left. Uh, so end around. Actually, sorry, the boss gets to go, doesn't he? Uh, he'll take a swing. And miss. And then, uh, end around, a four. Werewolf arrives, random table center, seven. We'll be over here, actually. That's initiative. Well, I think we go, you leave with the orders. We've completed that objective now. We've re re retrieved the orders. You are going to try to heal my sapper, which you do. So he'll go up to 10. You will also boogie. And then you are going to reload and plug this guy. Oh no, wait, we can't do that. We can't do anything now. <laughs> uh, we round down. We lost another guy last turn, which means it's just you two. So I guess you leave, and that's it. Which means you can't do anything. We're fighting this poor fool. Oh dear. Let's see how this goes. He jumps in, and takes a swing at plus two. Uh, that is a nine, 10, 11. Don't need a 13. He will back off as his action instead of trying to fight back. This wolf takes a bite at uh, Ramirez. Rolls an eight, nine, doesn't hit. Ramirez will swing back with his silvered weapon. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's a 14, 15, 16. Four damage, he only has one left, kills him. But he becomes fatigued. Then this wolf comes around the corner and doesn't quite make it. And there's one more, which can see up this hill actually. It comes flying along the way. Well, that's the monster phase. You're gonna reload here, Delgado, and see if you can finish this guy off. He is at least fatigued, so he's minus one defense. He's only defense 12. Uh, that'll do it. Eight damage with a silvered shot. Plugs that werewolf and kills it. But he's now fired. I think Ramirez reloads and fires his shotgun at minus one into this guy. Uh, and that will be five, six damage. Doesn't quite kill it. And you're just gonna fire your musket into that wolf uh, and get a 12, which is exactly what you need to kill it with 10 damage, and then walk away. Peace out. Right, and around a three. Two more wolves arrive in a random corner, starting at top left. So two more wolves arrive over here. But I think we're outie. 
Yeah, Ramirez is just gonna leave. Not reloading his gun. Delgado's gonna try and leave. He's just gonna go his six to here. He needs to make a proper sprint check though. Big money, no whammy, you need to roll an 11. Hey, uh, that'll do it. So he goes four and leaves. All right, well, we managed to kill a werewolf and a whole bunch of wolves. So rewards, the unit receives the following bonus experience. Plus one experience point if the unit investigates three or more clue markers, we did. Uh, plus one experience point if the unit kills five or more dark wolves, uh, we definitely did. Plus one for each werewolf, so that's gonna be one, two, three. Plus two if at least four soldiers exit, they did. And plus three if a soldier exits table with the orders, they did. Max out our experience means all five of these guys and potentially these guys here will uh, get two experience if they live through the game. Check for some injury though, <laughs> we're not doing very well with the Swiss guards. The, uh, the Vatican guards are dying left and right. How'd they do? Five? That's a full recovery, flush wound, thank goodness. And then my Grenadier, seven, also full recovery. So everybody gets two XP, because we had tons to go around. We had one base for everyone surviving, and there was more than seven bonus, which means they all get two. We're getting there, we're getting close to being able to get a courage bonus for everybody. Research to do this uh, mission, because we were just recovering the orders, uh, and then reorganizing and re-equipping. I'm actually pretty happy with everybody. I really like the oil and torches as like a you know, backup, basically, for everybody to be able to fight with. Um, and Rubio is excited Briner survived, and that uh, so did Delgado, which means that uh, Ramirez's group is all now in experience uh, and ready to start leveling up. He's in power rank because we haven't got our, um, our, uh, our actual tiers up yet. That means we'll be on to scenario two, the ruined chapel that we were searching for. I haven't gotten the orders. Uh, we get to find this, this, this really destroyed chapel in the woods. So we got all Ramirez and his silver bayonet unit managing to defeat the pack of werewolves. They clearly massacred their predecessors and left their bodies strewn apart the forest as they pushed deeper in search of this mystical rumored lost chapel uh, deep in the forests of Europe. So uh, next mission, of course, we're going to come upon the chapel itself and hopefully find uh, what is going on, unlock its mysteries, uh, and find something useful for the fight against the Harvest Men. So we'll see you for that in two weeks. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a gaming. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.